world ravaged by the undead and parasitic creatures. The apocalypse as we know it seems to not have an end. The rentkin in my area went exponentially up as soon as things went bad, so I know that there is still an origin out there waiting to be discovered. Before I went underground, I was with a group. Now, I am all that remains, and I am constantly reminded of their screams that ring in my ear. <laughs> I've spent almost all of my resources down in this bunker, and haven't seen the sun in what feels like forever. So if I'm going to die, it will be by putting up a fight. Make sure you watch until the end for an animated cutscene, and if you are entertained at any point, consider liking and subscribing to help me pass 30k subscribers. It lets me know that you guys want these type of videos. Anyways, I hope to see you there at the end for the cutscene, and let's get right into the story. We got a world to save. Day one, with all my resources spent within the bunker, it was time to leave. So I took everything that I had left, and I started to make my ascension up the ladder, and finally saw daylight for the first time in years. You're in a lot of nature. Oh my goodness! Uh... Another survivor. I don't see that all the time. Anyways, listen up kid, you have three tasks that you must complete if you want me to get you out of here. First, you must find a zero patient. Second, explore the wastelands. And third, find the origins of the apocalypse. Do all of these things and I will come by for you. Soon, I will be able to give you some UAV assistance, so try your best to survive. Well, I was already trying to do one of those things. Isn't it kind of weird? He... he kind of sounds like me. I made myself a boat and a stone pickaxe, and found some iron ore high on the surface. Yeah, I made my way into a lost city, where one of the chests had some very good starter loot. Let's go! I continued searching through the lost city, where the top loot I got were some iron ingots, and I made my way to the ocean and started to paddle until I made it onto some land. Eventually, I stumbled upon an old supermarket, where food was starting to get low. At first, I thought it would be best to stay within the building, but eventually, I got some confidence. You know what? We're going out. Which led me to a home where there was a bed for me to sleep in. Day two, I found an old medical camp where I found loot that would help us throughout our whole journey. A freaking shulker box. We're set. Nurse leggings, okay. Got some pants on. Blood bag. In this pink building, I got myself a saw. And then the hunger was really starting to set in. The colors were beginning to fade as I got dehydrated and had no choice but to drink some contaminated water. I am so dumb. Okay, let's eat some raw salmon. Please. Jeez, there has to be something. The hell is that, man? I'm gonna die. A giant brute and a couple zombies found me just as I had run out of hunger and was beginning to take damage. I need chicken. Please let there be food or something. I'm begging. I'm actually gonna die already. But with the few raw foods that I had collected, it kept me going just enough to find some cows on the horizon. Hello, caves. No need to see the slaughter that the cows went through, as the result is in my hotbar. But eventually I did find this three to four story building where there was a crate upstairs with tons of food to collect. A furnace, a bl oh my god, a smoker, even better. Put an oak slab in there. Within this building, there's also a few weapons and pieces of armor that were useful for the start. I would go to sleep in this building, and on day three, I continued my looting efforts, where eventually I ran into a juggernaut zombie, who upon killing, dropped some canned meat. I finally got a very useful item, the can opener, and could now open any canned foods that I had collected. With the saw I got the other day, I used it to swiftly chop down some trees to get a substantial amount of wood. Anti-hunger pill, give me this. I am gonna get hungry no more. I don't know if that did anything. I don't have no effect. I used this totally wrong and I thought it would just get rid of hunger for a while, but it actually literally gets rid of the hunger effect. As I journeyed on, I eventually found an abandoned farm where there were some hay bales in the corner that I collected. I also found myself a red motorcycle helmet that matched well with my pants. Oh, I see something dropped. Yeah, I'm bringing one. Okay, I mean, man, that looks like a plane crashed. Check it out the next day. Let's make sure this house is safe. The house was indeed fully cleared, and I would go to sleep there. Day 4, I returned to the crashed airplane site, where I made a very beneficial discovery, but limited myself. Now luggage, these are all shulker boxes. Alright, the fairness of the 100 days, I will only be having 3 max. How about that? There was some exposed coal and iron ore right by the site, so I of course collected it. Watch this. Ah, ah. 
Parkour. There were tons of things I needed to collect early on if I wanted to survive. And one of those items was an iron handle, which will come to use later. Looks like we'll be taking this. Copper. What can we do with copper? Copper ingot, which can make an accumulator, which can make an exo body. We need that. About to make fun of copper. The game's sitting at too fast. Looks like it was under construction before the fall. Within this unfinished house, there was a blast furnace, so I decided to cook up the iron I collected. And of course, took the blast furnace. As I journeyed on taking zombies that came upon my path, I found some better armor, crafted some torches, and would go to sleep. Day 5, I learned how advanced these zombies really were. This guy's got a lava bucket, what is he, a griefer? Dude, look at him! You're kidding me. Helm. <gasps> Who knew griefers were still alive in the apocalypse? As I journeyed through a lost city, there was actually a fire station within it, and the firefighter armor within there was actually better than what I had. So I collected a full set, except for the helmet, since the juggernaut one is better, and found myself a simple machete, which would be my weapon of choice for now. Drop me something. Leggings? Alright, well, we found ourselves a home for the night. Day 6, I continued looting and found myself a bandage and batteries, which would be my most sought after item. Oh, we got a conveniently placed cave here. So because this cave was so conveniently placed, I decided it was time to make the first mining trip. And I didn't even go too deep until I found some radium. Radium? I even safe? I know genius, but I'm pretty sure radium is like radioactive. And as I continued my stairs down, I eventually found an open cave where I found some rubies, more iron, lapis lazuli, and some diamonds and water. Oh, <gasps> yes! The diamonds are here. Give me three. Yes. After mining for some time, I started to cook up some of it in the blast furnace and crafted myself a diamond pickaxe, which is used to extract titan ore. Then I would go to sleep and on day seven, I would continue my mining efforts, adding gold ore to my inventory and a lot of the ores I previously mined. <gasps> the boots. All right, so we somehow start making our way back after I find some diamonds. Nice little batch of them. Kept on telling myself I would leave, but hey, the diamonds kept on throwing themselves into my path. All right, so we get going. Just kidding. Oh my god. I mined all night and it would turn day eight while I was still in the cave, but eventually I went back up to the surface. I journeyed on looking for more buildings to loot from, and eventually found an abandoned military camp where there was a chest plate that gave me resistance three. Oh, you didn't you get resistance three? I also found a desert eagle in the camp, and in a building nearby, I found a shorty. I would end up settling here for a bit and started to smelt more of the ores I collected and made myself one of the most important things you need to survive in this zombie apocalypse. There we go. This workbench now unlocked an endless possibility of guns that we can make. Oh my goodness. All right. I'd go to sleep within this building and on day nine, I found myself a book that taught me some food recipes that I would never end up using. Before heading out for a bit, I crafted myself some uncommon material and found a broken nether portal where the best loot to me were iron nuggets. I was now starting to truly see how expensive it is to create the material you need in order to create guns to survive but you gotta do what you gotta do and at last i would create my first gun the m16a4 boom let's go baby look at this it's like csgo go but what's a gun without bullets okay three uncommons and two gunpowders ladies and gentlemen we are going broke reload this hoe Oh, that's hot. I was looking into how to create certain items that I would need in the future, and then I got a message that a blood moon had rised that night. Ah, oh, shoot. All right, stay on high alert. Thankfully, it was not intense at all, and I continued smelting within the building, but during the nighttime, I got a glimpse as to the horrors I would face in the future. I stayed within the building until the blood moon set, and on day 10, I continued smelting the ores that I had, and then packed my bags to leave the building where a hazmat was waiting for me outside. Hello there. Out of ammo? This thing sucks. But anyways, beside this building, there was a big supermarket, which looked like a completely safe place to call my home. Oh my god, there's a farm here. Hold up, we can like sustain ourselves. Duct tape, that fixes everything. Police leggings, somehow that gives you plus seven. Okay, all right, this is a big contender to make our home. 
Please be advised, UAV assistance is now online. Then I learned how radioactive radium really is. Ah, I get it now. After sorting my items in their respective chests, I went outside to take out some zombies. Oh wow, the knockback. And then I go to sleep. Oh! Let's go. Yeah, 11. Okay, next, I say we explore all these buildings because they are not yet explored. Who knows what loot we can get? And that is exactly what I did. I went building to building, searching through every chest, collecting anything that was useful to my survival. Another simple machete. I guess we don't need this one anymore. On a whole town. Fortunately, this little town that I called, it's more just a driveway, ended up being quite a letdown, except for this big backpack. And I would go to sleep in the open lands that night. And on day 12, I continued my looting efforts until I stumbled upon a lost city where staying years in a bunker thinking of your fallen soldiers does take a toll. The hell is that noise? Bro, what is going on? But I continued moving on, looting the chest that I could find. Nice! Oh, look at that. Dead. Piss off, silverfish. I have scratch? What does that mean? But after looting this chest, I used a bandage, and it took care of the scratch. Oh, there we go. Once I left the city, I found this unfinished construction site, which had a better helmet than mine, so I popped that thing on, and then found a building with half of its wall blown off, where I found a Russian's favorite drink. Vodka, yes, yes. But my favorite thing was finding some batteries. Batteries, sweet, and rubber. Once I got back to my place, I unloaded everything that I got and put them in their respective chests. And during the nighttime, I did a little bit of scouting and took one of the lamps from one of the buildings to put outside of mine and then went to sleep. Day 13, I harvested the beetroot, but unfortunately, I don't know why I couldn't plant some seeds in some of the area, so I just had to let it be. Well, I can't plant here. But I can't farm. And then I returned back to a lost city, but it was attached to a wasteland area. Uh-oh. Is this a wasteland? Yep, it is. So I decided to not go fully inside of it and continued my looting efforts in buildings I had not yet entered. Eventually I ended up in a mountainous area and found a building where I would stay for the night. Day 14, I found myself an even better chest plate. Civilian bulletproof vest. So it's obviously a lot powerful, but does it have resistance? It does! Oh my gosh, no way. I ended up in a supermarket where there were tons of foods and at last I made contact with civilization. I just find a village. And then within this village, I heard the shrieks of a giant zombie. Where? Oh my god. Waiting on the next level. Oh, looks like you're stuck, pussy. I just missed my first shot. Alright, eat lead. That thing was tanky. I guess a little reward of taking it out were blocks of coal in the attic area. It's a miracle this village has survived the apocalypse. Right in the swamp. A new Shrek would protect them. After almost a full day within that village, I would head back to go to sleep. Day 15. Alright, let me get some wood. This is something I'm lacking in right now. I ain't talking about down there. I went out to collect some wood since I didn't have much. And when I returned back, I made a stairway down leading to a cave that was right under. I mined what I could, but sometimes there would be a little jump scare to wake me up. <gasps> oh my god, dude, those footsteps. Oh my god. The rat king. And upon killing it, it dropped me a titan ingot and I would go to sleep within the cave. Day 16, I encountered a group of zombies, which eventually led me to use my M16. Okay, we got a few. Other than that, I used my machete to fend off the line of zombies, and continued my mining efforts where I found more lapis lazuli, and also some diamond ore. Sweet. I mined all day, and would go to sleep within the cave, and on day 17, I continued collecting some lapis. Draw me your helmet. Oh wow, he dropped the whole package. <laughs> As I journeyed through the cave, I would run into zombie boots who soaked in a lot of my M16 shots. He doesn't die. I hate. 
Got scratched. Nice. After bandaging up, I made some stairs up back to the surface and was glad to go back home, where I combined some of the pieces of chemical armor that I had collected and would go to sleep. Day 18, I waited for my ores to finish smelting and then made some exo boots. Boom! Exo boots which give you jump boost. From the broken nether portal that was nearby, I converted some of the lava into obsidian and collected it. Went out to do some tree chopping, then I went into some of the buildings I visited previously and collected some books, made some bookshelves, and cleared one of the rooms within my base to turn it into enchantment table room. And on day 19, I finished the process of renovating that room into an enchantment table area. All right, what would give me? Level 30 enchants, let's go. I started by enchanting my exo boots and took a gamble, but it ended up coming out to my favor. Section 3, cannot be happier. I went into the neighboring buildings and started to add some torches inside so it wouldn't turn into a spawner house for zombies. And I then waited for the sun to go down so that zombies would start appearing more. And I hunted them down for nether quartz, which would come handy into making some more materials to create parts for guns and for the exo suit. Day 20, I harvested the quartz I collected last night, crafted some copper wire and dark metal plates, made myself a chip, and made the exo leggings. Although I had two pieces of the exo suit, there was still a lot more collecting left of batteries. I rolled the enchantment table until I got protection 4 for my leggings, and along that, I also got to unbreaking 3. Yep, that would've been dumb to pass up. I also got fortune 1 on an iron pickaxe, and then got ready for a very long adventure, which would be finding the remaining batteries I needed to create the exo helmet and exo chest plate. So, I started my journey and ran as fast as I could, and in the process I found some blueberries and would go to sleep within a village. On day 21, I continued my journey and ran into a lost city where I looted some of the chests. After that, I took a very long road. I mean, I think I was running for over a minute in this thing. The long ass tunnel. Ah, oh, dang it. We're gonna be taken to nowhere. I unfortunately didn't find any batteries in any of these buildings, but I did find a camp where I would end up settling for the night. Day 22. After some traveling, I ended up on the ocean where I paddled until I ended up on the shore of a desert. I went through some of the buildings and got myself a new can opener. Give me some batteries. Check the back room first. Bandage. Okay. Yes! Oh my god! <laughs> you have no idea how happy that makes me. Alright, one down, a million more to go. Huge W. And then I ran into an old gun store. And this thing was absolutely loaded. It even had a katana, which would now be my weapon of choice, doing 23 damage. I also got a book that gave me the gunner achievement and continued taking any guns of interest that were within the store. It took me all day to do this, so I would go to sleep within the gun shop. And on day 23, I took the road once more where I found the troll version of the battery I needed. I'm all uh, not the right battery. Alright, this looks like an old military camp. Within this military camp, there were MREs on the outside and some zombies waiting. God, this thing takes forever. This thing sucks. I guess I'm out of ammo. Oh wow, what a surprise. Eat this double barrel shoddy though. Ooh. Ooh. That's all I got. Yeah, sweet. Got an AKM. Oh, there we go. Military bo- oh, oh! Plus 18? Bro, that's better than the exosuit, I think. Cigarettes in the trash, right where they belong. Reinforced door. What lies behind here? Uh -huh -huh. Oh, green shulker boxes. Sweet. Painkillers. Not bad. An AT4? What the hell is this? Alright, now I know what that is. The Spaz 12 with an axe. Jeez. STG44. Bomb squad leggings. Oh my god, that's almost... That's better than what I have. Wow. M4A, one of my favorite. Dealing with guns, volume 3. Yeah, the loot in this military base was absolutely insane. And I would go to sleep, and on day 24, continued looting whatever was left. Alright, let's get out of here. As the sun began to set, I eventually found a pharmacy where I would end up staying for the night. And on day 25, as I journeyed on, I really saw how the villagers were thriving. Oh, is that a village? I see. Wow. The society really is better for them. I would journey on by sea, and and then I found myself another saw blade. Another saw blade, yes! I think we can get a, a ting. We continued looting, but there was no luck of finding any batteries. And as a matter of fact, I had some bad luck and found out that you can sustain a broken leg. No! Are you kidding me? That broke my leg? Oh, I got a slip. 
Thankfully, I found a slip earlier and was able to use it to fix my broken leg. That is the dumbest thing ever. All right, well, don't break your legs, guys. I'd go to sleep in the jungle that night, and on day 26, I collected some watermelons and took the high road. And this day would be an absolute hell. I went building to building, but found no batteries at all on day 26. Batteries, man. Day 27, I found this structure which had some TNT on it, so I collected it, of course, and then found a scrap metal factory. Fortunately, there was nothing of use except for scrap metal blocks, but at the time, I didn't know that they could be used to make the barbed wire, but hey, the more you know. Oh, foxes, oh my god. Even they are thriving. Let them go. Thankfully, I found another medical camp, which had a slip to replace the one I just used, and then I found a replica of my base where I would go to sleep. Day 28. From frustration, I went to sadness as the insanity was building up that I was not able to find batteries. <laughs> oh man, I'm actually gonna start crying. It's degrading my mind. All right, please be a zombie stream building. Okay. Fortunately, it was not a building where I could find batteries inside of, but it was anyways cool to find a hotel. So I didn't look much through it. Then I found a police station, which also didn't have much inside of it. And after, I found another pharmacy, which had a slipped in bandage. So of course I took it. And and honeycomb which would come to use in actually saving my life. It was another batteryless day and I found a hotel where I would stay for the night. Day 29. I only looked through the first floor of the hotel, didn't find much, and then I found a village where in one of the buildings they had some ores on display. Unfortunately, the diamonds that were supposed to be there were not there. And where's... what? No more use a diamond here. It's been mugged. And then I found something I have never seen before in a lost city. A blaze spawner surrounded by four chests. Is that blazes? What the hell? Oh god, that's a lot. Gun him down, gun him down. Ow, I want severe burns. Are you kidding me? Why am I starting to float? What the hell are these OP blazes? I was able to fend off the blazes and break their spawners and took them out one by one. Within the chest, I got very, very good Red. loot. Oh, sweet. Advanced rifling. Oh, God. Scratched? Damn it. Wait a second. Sweet. Anyways, I journeyed on. Still no contact with batteries in a while. And before going to sleep, I took out this hazmat guy. And on day 30, I would come to realize how far I have really traveled. Bro, the worst part is the journey home. I'm literally 5,000 meters away. That was a balaclava. You mean the poo shiesty? I look like a ninja, bro. Batteries. -na 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 -na. <gasps> oh my god. I almost missed that. Woo! All right, there's hope, there's hope. We may actually find some more batteries. So although I was rewarded with some batteries, in turn, there must be a balance in this world. And I was also given a blood moon that night. Shoot! Uh-oh. Oh my god. Please be advised, there's a higher concentration of zombies in your area. Take shelter immediately. Okay. It's a bunker. Get me in! Get me in, get me in, get me in. Nope. Too many. Oh. My. God. Oh. Oh. Thankfully, I got inside of the bunker and all I could hear were the zombies jumping down the ravine trying to get to me. They're all falling to the deaths. Oh. I wonder. Jesus. That's the yes. Oh. My! Never seen a more F around find out moment. And if it weren't for this bunker, I don't think I would have gotten that message seeing that the blood moon had set. I mean, there's only one way to find out how it is the great outdoors. Day 31, I was relieved to see that the coast was clear outside of the bunker. Oh my god! <laughs> Y'all could have seen my face, the sheer panic that I had. Also on this day, I was introduced to a new form of zombie, a TNT throwing one. I guess you could call these the bomber class. What? How dare you place it? Oh my god. There you go, there you go. See these soldiers at work. There you go, okay, okay. Oh my god, whole gang's going up on him. There we go, good job lads. Batteries, 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 batteries. Don't got it. Batteries, batteries, batteries. Batteries! Yes! Another battery added to the inventory, and I found a desert pyramid waiting to be discovered of what lies within. And of course, the worst thing possible happened. <gasps> a guy... <laughs> it. 
After dodging the zombie brutes, I built my way out of there, and as soon as I got onto the surface, I went to sleep. Day 32, I journeyed on and found a hospital where a zero patient was located. Alright, we got ourselves a hospital. Am I playing Escape and Parasites? What did I just see? Oh my god, what the hell is this? Loading. A zero patient. Dude, that thing's tanky. Let's take it to the village. Actually, no, I don't want my kill stolen. No, 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 no. With the villagers, we ganged up on the zero patient and took it out. Let's go. Humanity, when you see what can happen when humanity works together. My kill. I, I think I just killed a villager. Flesh of the infected. All right, what the hell is this? Ancient flesh? Good job on finding the patient zero. After scanning its DNA, it appears to be highly related to those of the parasites. It seems like the two are connected somehow. Patient zero. So was that the first zombie? The parasite, yep. All right. Do I have radiation? We're gonna have one of these. We have it. Okay, we have two minutes. With the anti-radon pill now in my system, I had a short time frame to explore what was inside of the hospital. And while doing so, I found another parasitic creature. <gasps> oh, bear trap. We do not want to step on that. Overall, loot-wise, there wasn't much within the building. Guess we got what we came for. We did find the patient zero. I think that's an accomplishment. But we didn't find the origins yet. The battery search continued on, and it was a success. Yes! Oh my god. All right. I think we need one or two more, because I don't remember if I have one at home. Bro, this city is just in the future. What did I tell you? The villagers waited for the humanity to collapse, and then they start building stuff like this. You know, some batteries would be cool, you know? Like, <clears throat> hypothetically, you know? Just hypothetically, oh my gosh. <laughs> yes! So I'd say we get two more just to play it safe. Some nice quartets for us here. Yeah. I would go to sleep. And on day 33, if it isn't clear yet, you need to find batteries in zombie extreme buildings, which is why this is my reaction. Ew, Pop goes now building. Nope, going the other way. Golf club. Dang, zombies really have a lot more health, but not enough. Come on, just give it to me. Give me some batteries! Okay, one one or two more, I forgot the count. I would enter a wasteland area in a building I had not yet explored, and continued being successful in finding things that I needed. Batteries! Yes, yes, yes! Yup, yeah, but the big boy. Alright, the big boy doesn't have big tings, that's okay. So, I would go to sleep, and on day 34, I did the math regarding how many more batteries I needed. We have seven. We need one of these, we need two of these, so that's three. And we need three more, so that's six. Alright, we have enough. Now we go home. To get to home, we are 5,740 meters. All right, let's use an anti-radon pill. Decided to cut through the wasteland area, and while doing so, I found some oil shale, which can be transformed into rubber. All right, let's just take the cycle pill. I'm really interested. What does it do? Strength, I knew it. Strength two. I journeyed all day, but of course I had not arrived home yet. And on day 35, I saw just how powerful zombies were really starting to get. That is actually insane. Maybe you only get radiation if you're like on the sand. That's a theory. And I'm about to test it right now. Yep, I called it. Alternate sand has the bad things. Batteries. Let's go. Another one. But anyways, I did continue my journey back home and then went to sleep. Day 36. At last, I would make it back home after a long adventure. I spent the day smelting the oil shale and sorting everything that I collected on my journey. Alright, everything's sorted. Kind of. Day 37. The day I fully suit up. That's right. So here's the whole crafting one. process to obtain a full exosuit. Two. Accumulator. Boom. All right, the exo body at last. What does it give me? Please just give me resistance three still. Oh, it gives me resistance two. Now, the helmet. The exo helmet, and we are officially exoed out. These are all the things you get. Here is the full 360 view of how I now looked like, but I needed it to be all matching, so I headed no, to not. the enchantment table. And on breaking three, I get rewarded. Protection four. Thank you very much. Dude, I look so cool. Oh my gosh. The testosterone levels are just, they're higher than the radioactivity levels, which means I'm gonna die. I got efficiency four on my diamond pickaxe. Okay, so I gotta find out, can I go into radioactivity zone? Will I die? Will I stay alive? All right, Sick. 
chemical suit is our only way besides anti-radon. I would head back home and go to sleep, and on day 38, I looked into how to make my next weapon of choice, the M60, and boy was it expensive. So we need 5 epic material and 10 rare material. Uh, it's so expensive, it hurts my eyes. I needed more obsidian for the epic material, so I collected it from the nearby broken nether portal, and officially had everything I needed to craft the M60. Give me this bad boy. Oh my goodness. I then crafted some ammo. Well, let's reload this bad boy. Sweet. Went out that night to take out some zombies. Unfortunately, in the process, I got scratched. Put a bandage. Fix that up real quick. Nice. Try me the chest plate. Nice. Gunpowder. Sweet. Oh, good. Like, these ones actually hit hard, if I remember correctly. Okay, they're nah. I now had two parts of the chemical suit with full durability, but now I was on to another project, which required a lot of terraforming around my base and placing netherrack to kind of get the idea of what I'm about to do. Oh my god! I got scared that I saw a message, but thankfully it was not a blood moon, and I sure was feeling a bit lucky. Give me unbreaking three as well. Wow, 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 wow. I then went out, but there really weren't any zombies at all, so I decided to go to sleep. And on day 40, I needed more netherrack, so I collected it by the nearby broken portal, continued terraforming around the base, and did this for the whole day. Day 41, I added efficiency one on a military shovel. All right, it's heavy like here. I'm gonna guess there's some spawner dungeon under me. So every time I come into this area, it gets all that. That was a theory that I had, which would be tested soon. But anyways, the terraforming efforts continued, and I started to remove the pink building that was in front of my base, and transformed it to make another entrance. Day 42, I continued renovating the entrance to my base. Every renovation episode on TV. Let's break this wall down that's in the kitchen to give some more space. Anyways, with all the material I was collecting, I was giving it a new purpose for the entrance, such as turning the stone brick into slabs to finish the roof, using the polished andesite for the entrance, and filling in some holes that were nearby. Perfect timing for Barbie, eh? Day 43, I added one reinforced door to the entrance, so now there was kind of like a double clearance thing in order to get inside of my base. Then in the nearby military camp, I got some tank traps and iron grid and started to place it to create a perimeter. And while doing so, I continued clearing up some dirt, which I would do for a lot of the day until I decided to burn down this nearby building for no reason at all. Kind isn't taken lightly here, brother. And before going to sleep, I started to light some of the netherrack up to create the ring of fire. Day 44, I decided to explore what was under my base since I haven't gone down there in a while and I made a horrifying discovery. I was basically on top of a zombie tomb. Why is there so many here? Alright, I hear a lot of them. Oh jeez. When in Rome. Jesus. That guy's powerful. I'm out. Just like that. I got infected! I had some vaccines, but they did not coincide with the mod, so they did not work. And that honeycomb I collected a while ago, well, now it would come into play. So I went out to collect some sand, put it in the furnace. With the glass, I made some glass bottles and made some homemade antibiotics to get rid of the infection. And it's gone. Woo! Day 45, I took another shot in clearing the zombies down below. All right, round two. Just gonna drop this one. Bro, how does that affect me? I'm behind cover. Jesus. What? So for the spawners. There's one. Okay. Bang. Diamond sword and the slow takeout speed of the M60 costed me a scratch. Pull it out! I'm out, bro. I need a better plan, and that better plan would be crafting the sledge saw. Hell yeah. We got ourselves the sledge saw. Sharpness 4 right off the bat. Give me that. Give me some other things. 
Okay, we'll take it. Before going to sleep, I'd craft some uncommon material, and on day 46, I went out to the tree shop in order to craft myself some more uncommon material, and then make some rare material to get my next gun, that being the MP5A5. Boom! Give it a little inspection. Nice, nice. Keep it up, reload that thing. Fun fact, this is the gun I got closest to getting a nuke in COD. Still haven't gotten one to this day. I'll try to go to sleep that night, but was met with a blood moon rising over that night. No! But I did not stay inside of my base, no. I went out to put up a fight against the hordes of zombies that would come my way. Nope! Idiot. Sit down. Alright lads, come over here. Nice, big damage. I knew this would happen, I just stayed inside, damn it. Also, while training the zombies, I don't know how I got scratched here. I wasn't even touched. I got scratched from who? Oh my god, I got just spawned right in front of my ass. Alright, son, do your ting. Oh my god, one has Frostwalker? Alright, f*** it. Oh my god, so many. I restocked an ammo, and would once more make another run in the tomb under my base. Alright. What just happened? I hate this so much. Why is this so hard? Right, that's, that's a lot of them. What's going on? Mow them down. I was able to find another spawner, but the hordes kept on adding on. levels to this. Alright, we're gonna block this off. Move! Got bleeding. Jesus. Alright, let's get out of here. Another unsuccessful mission. And I would go to sleep that night. And on day 48, I found out that zombies could pillage my chests. Alright, who the hell was opening chests? How, how's that even possible? What the heck? They open this chest? Are they that smart now? Try number two. I'm sick of the zombie infestation down here. It pisses me off. Right, that's a lot of them. Bro, they just keep on coming. No. Battery lost cause. I don't know what to do anymore. Let's go get ourselves a mending villager. The mountains we go. I went to the nearby village where I actually got a mending villager first try, but the time was now ticking. Oh my gosh, no way first try and I need emeralds. Shoot, man, who do we trade with? What's an easy job? Uh, Fletcher. That's right, the stick man. I collected some flint from the nearby mountain, created a Fletcher's table, but in the process I did break my leg, so I had to fix that <gasps> up real quick. Definitely just broke my leg. And we have a slip, thankfully. Yeah, that was pretty dumb. I'll take the L on that. Trapped a villager, went to sleep. And on day 49, I give a villager a Fletcher's job and started to trade some sticks. But unfortunately, I was too late. Oh, he changed, man. I knew that would happen. Now we got to go through the long process. Okay, I should actually wait and get paper. So I went out to go get some sugar cane and then went to sleep at my place. And on day 50, I collected some paper that I left in some of the chests that were in this building and created a sugar cane farm right outside my base. When I got back to the village, I found an emerald in one of the chests, crafted some paper and went back to work and eventually i got a bookman with mending yes secure it oh now it's just stick collecting time i would go to sleep on day 51 i would chop any tree that came in my path thankfully these trees would also drop additional sticks so it was quite useful i went back to the village once i felt like i had a substantial amount but maxed out the stick trade so i gave another villager a job and got enough emeralds to get my first mending book mending now Boom! And I need an anvil, I just realized. So I remember seeing an anvil in a lost city building, but I wasn't sure in which one, so I went searching, and in the process, I got some loot from the chest. Unfortunately, I gave up on the hunt for the day, and on day 52, I continued my search. Whoa, a backpack. I make it hidden, so I still look badass, though. Bread and some cactus. Cactus could actually be used as a weapon. Golden apples, let's go. Oh, you see ya. It was not a Mandela effect. I knew it all along. Now would you look at that? A perfectly new anvil. Now we can add mending. Easy too. 
I also crafted additional exo boots to enchant later and started to smelt the remaining radium that I had. The A53, I waited a long time for the radium to finish smelting because it does take quite a while and legit for the rest of the day all I did was tree chop until I went to sleep. On day 54, I continued my tree chopping effort, returned back to the Fletchers to stack up on emeralds, and got a substantial amount to get myself two more mending books. Sweet. I then started to enchant some of the chemical protection armor that I have been collecting. I then crafted myself a fresh pair of leggings and then went to sleep. On day 55, I added mending to my sledge saw and my diamond pickaxe, because our life also depends on it. Then I went to all the nearby camps and buildings to collect iron grid, reinforced log, and barbed wire to put it to use around my base to create another perimeter. This involved some terraforming, and then I found out the use of scrap metal. Dang it, scrap metal is useful. No, all those scrap metal sites I passed up on. My bad. I started to light up more of the ring of fire, and on day 50. 56, I enchanted a military shovel. Efficiency 4. Give me that. And fortune 2. And here's the difference of the efficiency 1 military shovel and the efficiency 4. Oh wow, I should have been using this. I'm literally like tapping it and it takes out like 5. After some time, I went out to get some more grid, whether it was protection or iron grid. I didn't care. And then I started to make a little shootout area to have on the back of my base. And here's what I came up with. I just gotta shoot one bullet. Ooh. Oh, oh, okay, oh. Before I went to bed, I added a roof onto it. And on day 57, I then did this. What the hell? I added some support beams to the new structure I made. And then look at this sick parkour. I think I can use this oh, 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 oh. oh, I had some built up confidence to give another try to clear out the zombies that were underneath. Bring it. That is a little too powerful for my liking. Oh my. What? Who the hell is an evoker? No! I think that was instant damage, but I ate it. Oh, bro. Alright, let's heal. Yeah, okay, they can have this place. I give up. I don't give a crap. It's underground. What are they gonna do? Nothing except mess with my FPS. And on day 58, I crafted some more uncommon material to restock on ammo. I enchanted the chemical protection vest. Who's here and thinks they can be here? And then at last, I covered up the entrance that went down into the tomb or cave. I don't even know what to call it at this point to make sure zombies could stop from coming back up. Like nothing was ever there. Then there were some horses that were roaming about near my base and I picked the best one I could. Sweet. Oh, the animation makes the armor look weird. It looks so weird. <laughs> For the rest of the day, I collected iron grid and iron bars. And on day 59, I started to lay it out and almost completed my perimeter. All right, let's go to stick man on the way there we're gonna get a bunch of trees so that's exactly what i did i got myself some more emeralds enough to get two more books of mending when i got back to my place i crafted some chemical protection boots and would go to sleep and on day 60 i enchanted the chemical protection leggings and added mending to my exo helmet and exo boots i then crafted some more material to get myself some more bullets and here's another reload appreciation this is my favorite reload look at this Oh no! I thought I'd be able to still see it. Sexy in it. Alright, we are low on gunpowder. I am once again asking for your financial support. I just realized I haven't checked how powerful this armor is. Okay, yeah, we're going in there with anti radon pills. What the hell was I thinking? This stuff is garbage. All this time I've been enchanting it was honestly quite a waste. I then opened up underneath my base to see that there was a bit of an open area, so I covered it all up with dirt so that nothing could spawn there. And on day 61, I decided to finally plant a potato that I got a while ago and expand the sugarcane farm. I got myself some more iron bars and at last completely the perimeter for my base. I also got this switch box to like add more character to the base and I had lost my saw so I was searching for one since it's actually very useful because you need it to create something in order to create a slip which fixes your leg. So I did not go to sleep in my base and on day 62 I continued my search for a saw but found a hand axe instead. Eventually I ended up in the lost city and continued finding 
found more loot and dealt with hordes of zombies. Oi, oi, oi. What am I getting scratched by? I just got hit by snowballs. Alright. I just missed every shot. And that's my last band-aid. Sick. I got infected. I need honey. After going to sleep on day 63, I was now on the hunt for honey, so I crafted myself a campfire. And boom! Now it's nice and safe. Sweet. When I got back, I crafted the homemade antibiotics and was once again healed from the infection. I went out to tree chop some more, and unfortunately, I got scratched. No, bro! And I can use the honeycomb because I don't have any more bandages. Why did they just all spawn around me? Hello? I got scratched. Yeah, I already know. Bro! So I decided to do a little bit of retaliation soon that retaliation would be paid back with more and more zombies. Alright. Jesus Christ. I really need to get my ass healed. I have bleeding. Never back down, never what? Never yeah, I want it louder though. Never back down, never what? Never give up. Never back down, never what? Never give up. Let's run it. Let's go. And fix my stupid slip. Let's go to sleep. You cannot go to sleep while you are bleeding. So I just had to endure. Bro. Painkillers. That's not making the pain go away. So all I could do was keep on eating and make sure I was regening health. Now I have whiskey always goes a long way. Bro, I can't stop the bleeding. Who's this? Maybe this will help? Nope. I mean, it's good experimentation to see, like, will this stuff go away eventually or, like, do you just die? I had to stay awake and on day 64, I still had to wait for the bleeding to stop. Oh, wow, so I have for the whole night with the scratch. Does he get infected? It does not, so it goes away. So the bleeding will be gone in three and a half minutes. Let's go, guys. Okay, what if I put the resistance three thing? Will that help? It's the longest 10 minutes of my life, bro. Five, four, three, two, one. It is all over. Gosh, bro. So it's survivable. So yeah, after all that to decompress, I planted one carrot. I then crafted some antibiotics and planted some blueberries. All right, we actually need to go on a journey and go through Apocalypse Now buildings because we need band-aids. That's basically my explanation. We need band-aids. That's right. Day 65, the day we get mending. When I got to the village, I harvested some hay bales, traded some sticks, and got myself another mending book. <coughs> Thank you. Bow, bow. Boom. With the hay bales I got, I crafted some bread, and finally got rid of the sandbags that have been blocking the passage downstairs. Day 66. The day I would set out on another journey to find some medical supplies and any food I could scavenge. Key thing to find, band-aids, cloths, textile thread, and barbed wire. Alright, where, where are the buildings? What's going on? It took me a while until I found the supermarket where there was an abundant supply of everything I needed. However, zombies were waiting for me. Oh, it's a supermarket. Oh my god. Is there like your best bet? Boy, do I have a lot to loot. Yes, bandage! Bro, I imagine I had to use it right then and there. Alright, they're just... They're just... I got jumped. I would go to sleep in the open forest lands, and on day 67, I would deal with the zombies that remained. No! Oh god, those guys are I'm bleeding, aren't I? Alright, trying to use the one bandage I just freaking got. I got infected. And that's why I packed antibiotics. Let's go. And we're healed just like that. After getting rid of the infection, I went back and got everything that I How needed. Much? French fries! It was worth it! When I was done with the first floor, I went on to the second and continued my looting efforts. Alright, that took very, very long. It's already about to become nighttime. I eventually found myself a camp where there was this flare gun in, but it wasn't really too impressive. Can I shoot this thing? Kapow! 
and on day 68, I would harvest all the barbed wire that surrounded the campgrounds. I still need a saw. So eventually I ended up in a lost city, found some more loot. I can't with these damn cities. I need apocalypse now structures. Yeah. As I journeyed on, I eventually ended up at another plane crash site where I took the doors and would go to sleep. A69. Aha. All right, I gotta go through literally every thing. Did anybody carry a saw by chance? An emerald. No way. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Now that's something I want to find. We got a lot of floors to clear. Uh, relax. Bro, are you kidding me? Unfortunately, nothing of use was in this hotel. There'd be something special here, like a saw. Ooh, Nemos. Eventually, I would end up traveling by sea, where I would find what remained of the Navy. A whole lot of zombies spawning, but they just <laughs> drop straight to the bottom. <gasps> whoa, 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 whoa. I don't know, the Navy tried to put up a fight. What do the mushrooms do? On day 70, I would go through the abandoned ship and get in return loot that was necessary to my survival. RPG, okay, we gotta take bomb squad armor. Bro, bomb squad stuff is insane. Boots even have 15 armor. That was an Alice pack. Oh, wow. A juggernaut body. Bro. But my objective was still to find a saw. And when I ran into a barn, I predicted that there should be a saw in here. All right, there, there has to be a saw in a barn. You, you needed to cut hay, right? Yes, I manifested it. I would go to sleep within the barn, and on day 71, I found another campground, so of course I took all of the barbed wire. On my way back, a wasteland stopped my tracks to V-line straight back home, so I decided to take an anti-radon pill to investigate the area. Maybe we'll find something. No useful information was found within that wasteland, and then I would run into another military camp where there was tons of barbed wire to harvest, and then I would go to sleep within the forest. Day 72, I would stumble upon another medical facility where a patient zero was located. A pussy. Yeah. God, that is disgusting. Yeah, sit down. I would go through another wasteland, but unfortunately, no signs of the origin was found. Now yeah, let's start by laying some barbed wire. I lay down barbed wire for the rest of the day, and I had enough to create a full barbed wire perimeter. Day 73, I started by crafting some spike barriers. Does it hurt? Doesn't, but it looks cool. I then added the plain doors to the entrance and moved the reinforced door to the second entrance. So now I had a double clearance system, you could say. I had some bone meal on hand, so I expanded my carrot and potato farm and then added the spike barriers to make it harder to get within the perimeter. With the remaining barriers, I added it to the entrance to make it look more menacing. And for the rest of the day, I did some terraforming at the front. Day 74, I started by crafting some uncommon material, but needed more wood. The forest we go. When I got back, I had enough uncommon material to create a scope. All right, let's see this thing. Okay, dude. Now that is nice. On day 75, I realized that I did not have any obsidian, which was needed to create some more material if I wanted a certain gun. In the meantime, I crafted some rare material. I'll reload the ting. Oh wait, it's already maxed. Bro, I don't have obsidian here. And that's not a lava pool. Eventually, I went away from my base and found a lava pool on the surface, so I converted it to obsidian and got an abundant amount to craft some epic material. This is all for a specialized grip. Nice. Get that thing on there. Sweet. Look at that thing. Not bad. Day 76. I now wanted to craft a shotgun, but I needed some leather. Where are thy cows? Yes, there's a cow, and there's only one. Please give me leather. Hello there. Would you like to be the last of your species? Leather. Let's go. Okay, I think we need like a couple more. All right, look, the rules change in the apocalypse. Those horses aren't mine. You know, I'm doing them a favor as well. Look, there. It's a painless death. It's a one shot. Hey there, guy. Oh man, why? Why do I need to hear that? And that one didn't give me anything. Look, those horses were exposed to radioactivity. All of them, but mine. So I actually was doing them a favor. Yes, build me the shoddy. All right, let's look at this thing. Okay, when it sounds like that, it's alright if it's expensive. And we are out of iron. 
Before ending the day, I got myself some nether quartz to get some XP. And on day 77, I needed a plan to get myself some more iron. Okay, so we're low on iron. That means we need to kill some zombies. And I know the perfect spot to get ambushed by them. Come on out, boys. I went to the nearby city that was close to the wasteland and took out the zombies there. So I got some iron ingot drops from them. Of course, I got scratched. Doesn't mean anything. I'm not going to get infected. Whatever. And eventually, I ended up in one of the buildings and found just what I needed. Ooh! Okay, let's go. Whoa. I spent the whole day there, and on day 78, I was able to craft some 12 gauge shells for my shotgun. All right, let's reload the ting. Okay. Hey, it's, it's just Harry Potter's scar. That's all that is. I can't believe I unintentionally made that. Trying to survive the night. All right, well, this wasteland have the answers we're looking for. She's got a whole lot of nothing. This one's cleared. Yeah, that was a bit of a disappointment, not gonna lie. We still haven't found the origin, so keep looking in the wasteland. When I got back to my place, I harvested some blueberries and added some more along the building. Let me see if we can get lucky with some book enchants. This thing could actually use knockback. Knockback 2. Wow, now I'm getting trolled. Then I added it to my sledge saw and would go to sleep. Day 79. I started by harvesting the beetroot. Ooh, I have a good idea. Just in case things go south, a little dugout here in the mountain. That was my objective for the rest of the day. I created this little bunker shootout area carved inside of the mountain, and here was what I ended up with at the end of this day. Nice little bunker. Day 80. Then I added another part to this project, which was creating this tunnel that connected the bunker in the mountain to my main base. I also cleared up more space inside of the mountain, and here is my progress so far. It's quite a tunnel. Bro, looks like I'm building a wall. I then created the entrance to this tunnel at the entrance in my base, and then I heard an unwelcome guest within the base. Is that in my house? What an idiot. 81, I fixed up the entrance into the tunnel because I kind of messed it up the first time I did it and started making a pathway under the ground. I continued to extend the tunnel and the area by the bunker. I know where to add the rest of my barbed wire now. And since I had a lot of barbed wire to use, I decided to add it around the outside portion of the bunker. Day 82, I patched up the area where the tunnel was underground to make it more hidden, and at last I had completed the tunnel's construction. I also finally took off the iron horse armor off of my horse because it just looked weird. Then I harvested my crops and an idea popped in my head. I should have also just put the barbed wire right in front of the fence. For the rest of the day, I finished planting more crops and adding more dirt in the area, and on day 83, a bomber was waiting outside. Why is there so many? <gasps> That's right by my house. Brilliant. Oh, okay, it only does damage. Doesn't destroy objects. That's good to know. I returned back to the village to trade sticks and then got one more mending book to add to my military shovel. Mending. There was still one task left, which was finding the origin of the apocalypse. So I journeyed out and my first stop was this hospital. I don't think I've seen this one before. Is this a hospital? Or is this the hotel that Drake is talking about in Utopia? The one that's good enough. Inside of this building, there are tons of medical supplies and I kind of just wanted an excuse to shoot the shotgun against that zombie. Saline. First aid, hey. I didn't clear the whole building within this day and on day 84, I continued my looting efforts within the hospital. Ooh, reinforced door. Oh, soldier kit. Let's go. Okay, medical kits and antibiotics. Yes. I journeyed all day and ended up in a lost city, so I went to sleep. And on day 85, I replaced my broken anvil and at last journeyed into a wasteland where I found the origin. Seven, do you copy? I think you have found the area where the origin of the apocalypse is located. I've never seen higher levels of rent can ever before, so proceed with caution and don't spend too much time or you will die due to radiation poisoning. Higher levels of radiation? All right, I'll be careful. I'll get inside. Radium? Here's the apocalypse was a man-made failure due to a failed nuclear plant explosion. You're telling me this thing was man-made? And we made 
one of the Russians for Chernobyl. Look what we did. Jesus. We really are our own worst enemy. Wow, chips, saw blades. But these people were way more advanced. They decided to mine the exposed radium to stop the exposure of radiation. So, we now knew what really caused the apocalypse. Let's get the hell out of here. I need a name tag. I need to name my horse. So that was not my next task, to find a name tag. So I went through Lost City Chess, got a lot of gunpowder, at least, and also found some more batteries on the way back. Day 86, I returned back home and took out this demolisher that was behind the gate. Cool to see the bunker from a distance now. <laughs> Sit down. What does this do? Oh, it gives regen. Okay, it's actually better than I thought. I then added this way to get in and out from the backside of the base. I realized I hadn't done that, so I created this trapdoor contraption. God, I look so badass. I haven't appreciated myself in a minute. Look at this. 360 cam. Day 87, I resumed my task to find a name tag in order to name my horse, so I journeyed to a lost city. Wait, where did the... When did the difficulty get insane? What happens when you mess with the config? These ones are always just juicy ones. Let's go, let's go. Wow. <laughs> wow. Unfortunately, I had no luck that day, but when I got back, I added these concrete barriers that I got on the way out. Day 88, once again, I went out to look for a name tag. No, not a shield freak. You can stay in there. God, he's actually smart though. Eat the shoddy. Oh my god, there's no way I missed that many shots. That was actually kind of sad. Aim tag? Emptiness. Like my soul. Aim tag? Diamonds? Look at that. Nebedis. Yes! Name tag! I returned back home, but before naming my horse, I enchanted my second pair of exo boots and got more useful enchants, so I combined them with the ones I had. Uh, let's get a horse name. That's right. We got that album of the year, even during the apocalypse. Here you go. Utopia. Oh, ah, oh, scrap metal. Damn it. Oh, you make that with cans. Hold on. They've been useful this whole time. It's the other one, isn't it? Oh, right. At first, the night was quite slow, and once I emptied the magazine in the M16, I then used the other guns, or the antiques, I call them, which make no noise. Bro, how can they see me from there? Because of the gunshots? Alright, now let's get the, the antiques out. Alright, who wants some bullets? There we go. Now the party decided to show up. Alright, eat, eat this. Yeah, that's right. Oh my god, what the hell did I do? I just walked outside and this happens? There's so many. Look guys, I know Utopia's in here, but only I can have album of the year. We want to see some fireworks? Talk about crowd control. Alright, eat lead. a beautiful sunrise i'm gonna tell you that a very productive blood midnight and on day 89 i would deal with the rest well you know how we deal with the baby zombies ever heard of anakin and the children in the jedi temple oh it looks like the younglings were powerful <laughs> anakin had some trouble didn't he oh my god no wonder I then crafted myself some more materials so I could forge some more bullets. I then went to the nearby firefighter station just to look for anything of use that I may have missed, and I did find myself some more MREs. Trader MRE! MREs for the win. And Andy. Alright, let's look for any cans, canned food. Now, my goal was to find any canned food or cans in general to convert it to scrap metal so I could craft some more barbed wire. Oh, saw it. A shield! Haha! That reminded me, I actually needed one. Day 91, I continued searching for any canned foods. Yes, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. You know, there's gonna be cans on cans in here. Yes. Oh my gosh. And since I needed to first eat the food in order to obtain a can, I decided to eat some rotten flesh so I could get hungry faster to consume the canned food. I would also run around to boost the process. And after some time, I had enough scrap metal to craft myself some more barbed wire and then would go to sleep.
Day 92, I started laying out the barbed wire where most of the zombies bunch up during blood moons. And then I found out another mechanism I could add to the perimeter. Glass spikes. <gasps> so I got myself some corn flowers since you needed dyed glass and made myself some glass shards. So this area is going to be the most toxic thing. Barbed wire, fire, and glass spikes. I wanted to add some more, so I went out to get some sand, transformed it into glass. I also got myself some more books and started playing around to get enchants that I could possibly add onto one of my guns. Reclaimed two. And on day 93, I crafted myself some blue stained glass, crafted glass spikes, and added more. Wait, let me see how. What does this do? I'm gonna guess bleeding. Bleeding 2 is a very scary lineup. All right, we need levels. So in order to get that reclaim 2 that I left on the enchantment table, I went out to the lost city to get rid of any spawners. While doing so, I found myself more chests. Ah, ha ha. Filled with good loot. Oh yeah. Oh. And also I just found another excuse to use the shotgun to look badass. And you can eat my- <gasps> Lead! Jesus! Ah, uh, those guys are actually meant for jump scaring. On my way back, this baby zombie gave me a scratch, but I easily covered it up, and I returned home. Eat my glass. Oh, that's a shame. Oh, no. Sweet. After dealing with some zombies outside of the perimeter, I went to sleep. Day 94, I got Reclaim 2 on a book and added it to my M60. Not bad. All right, can I get the items? Nice. Come on, come on. <gasps> Bro, my guy just automatically jump. What was that? All right, all right, let's heal, let's heal. Parkour mod, I hate it. Did I ever say I liked it? I then got advanced rifling one. I'm not sure which gun you can apply it on. I'm guessing a rifle, but none of mine were illegible. I also got tumbling and same thing applies here. For the rest of the day, I harvested my crops and put some potatoes into the smoker. Day 9 to 5. I got my freshly baked potatoes out of the smoker and decided it was time to go back into a cave to get some lapis. Some liquid confidence real quick. So eventually I did find some and I found a spawner which had an item I had not yet obtained. Indeed! Uh. While mining lapis, I also find myself more diamonds. Actually quite a lot since the pickaxe I was using has fortune on it. And before the sun began to set, I returned back to the surface just in time to go to sleep. Day 96, and I now wanted to create, I'm just gonna call it an op, because it looks like one, not an om. And I realized I was very low on iron, so I really should have mined iron when I went yesterday. But anyways, we had time, so after crafting some material, I decided to go back down into the mines and get as much iron as possible. I will get my dragon lure up. You understand me? After mining there for a very long time, I found a bunker down there, and this one was quite cool. It had a bunch of redstone contraptions, and I had to pull a few levers before I could find the ladder that led to the surface. Ah, dude, this is such a cool mod. Canadian submarine. When I got home, I started cooking up the iron ore and would go to sleep. And on to seven. And I think I'm gonna need more obsidian. So while this is cooking, I should probably do that. Oh, I need to go down into the cave. Uh, I didn't realize that. Yes, giant lava pool. Except for these mobs, bro. Dude, I don't get the. Alright. That was not cool. Oh my god! The zombies kept on coming one after another, and man, all I was looking for was a lava pool to convert into obsidian. Dude, I just need some obsidian, damn it. This is like a hot zone, I'm out. Just need a lava pool, it's not that deep. I started mining the obsidian, and at the start, I was being interrupted before I could break the block constantly. Oh my god. Don't use a gun, don't use a gun, that'll attract more. Mine in peace! Oh my god, bro, I can't even mine one before one already comes up. And of course, the Wasteland Spider had to make its own cameo. Oh! You disgusting prick. I've just made a discovery. The reason why parasites in this area aren't evolved into the ones we know and fear is because of the radiation level. So the ones that scattered further out from here are the giant ones that we have already faced. 
Is that so? Maybe I just want to stay in this area so we don't have to deal with the other parasites. So I would mine obsidian for a very long time. And of course I had to snag those diamonds on the way out. Thankfully I did find myself a different bunker while down there and used it to get back to the top. Let's put the glass shards to the test. On my way back, it was either the barbed wire or the glass shards that cut me up, but I used my bandage to fix that real quick. I then started crafting some of the material I needed to obtain my op. Alright, 11, 14 more to go. And did this for the rest of the night. I'm cooking, I'm cooking. Give me a second, give me a damn second, day 98, damn it. We need five of these hoes. Wait, I can make it. Oh my god, I did it. Holy... We got ourselves an op. Before crafting the ammo, there was this rat king stuck outside, so I took him out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're doing Utopia. Sick. Oh my god, 24 bullets. All right, we'll chill. We'll chill at two. All right, let's see. Let's reload the ting. Oh my god, that's too nice. Supports mini scope. Can we get those ones? We can't get. Can we not get like a hella zoomed one? I was quite confused about that because I didn't just want to red dots on this thing. But anyways, here is me testing out the gun. Oh, <laughs> that was a clean sound. All right, this this needs to go. It's actually a hazard. Can't see anything. Very poor strategically. And with everything I just extracted, I decided to create some sugar and use some eggs that I had in storage to create some blueberry pie. Then I waited, looking out, waiting if there would be a blood moon, but there wasn't one that night. Day 99, I needed more iron if I wanted to create a scope for my op, so I went back into the mines to get even more iron, and when I got back, I started cooking it up, crafting more material, and I decided to make a four times scope, hoping I wasn't just allowed to put a mini scope on, but maybe I should have just listened to the game. Please, it doesn't. Bro, so what gun works with an old scope? Can't believe I just spent that much though, I kinda wanna cry. On day 100, I would head to the wasteland city and would deal damage to the zombie population that was there. Oh my god. That's that's actually a hard shot to hit. I wanna see how the gun mechanic works, so that guy doesn't hear me. What? I didn't realize that. Okay, that's my bad. Oh wow. That's satisfying. They don't call me the Canadian sniper for nothing. Once I got back, all I could do was sit and look at everything I created as the sun began to set. Now, it may have been nighttime, but I decided I wanted to do more damage against the zombie race. Target spotted. Target down. In the process though, I of course had to break my leg. I have a broken leg from that? Bruh. This game sometimes. To just enjoy a little montage of a badass in a suit slaying some zombies. I'll stall down. Oh, it's hunting night, baby. I just need the potion thrower. Eat that. Who wants some lead? Bro, the amount of bullets I saved because of reclaim there is actually insane. Heavy targets down. I have a bite. Uh oh, I bandaged that up. I can't. Parasite, that's a different one. Radioactive zombie spotted. What? I'm going apple, but it's safe. I'll make it to day 101 with new instructions. Good job on completing the tasks. Stand by for the rendezvous point. The rendezvous point? Say less. Bro, how do you heal a bite? Let me use one of these. I don't know if you can heal a bite. I never figured out how to get rid of the bite effect, but anyways, I made an opening so I could take my horse Utopia with me and follow my one and only next task. Get to the chopper. Alright, I'm relaying the rendezvous point. 
point, you have 10 minutes before we leave. Copy that. Thank you so much for watching till the end. I'd really appreciate it if you liked and subscribed to help me pass 30k subscribers and comment down below if you want this story to continue and to keep up with the animated intros and cutscenes at the end. And shout out to these people who are members of the channel. It's another way to support me. Thank you so much once again. Anyways, it's been your boy 7 and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.